Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So let's talk about eukaryotes and how glycerophospholipids are made in them, since we already talked about prokaryotes. So we know that eukaryotes can do both methods 1 and 2 to make their glycerophospholipids. Um, but since we talked about method 1 with the prokaryotes, let's just continue by talking about method 1 here. So we'll take phosphatidate, add to it some CTP, and then the CMP portion from that gets added onto phosphatidate while a pyrophosphate comes off. We get our activated isoglycerol in CDPDAG. Now this is activated, ready to go for the addition of polar head group alcohols to be attached to this red phosphate group here and knock this CMP off. So let's say we added phosphatidylglycerol to the CDPDAG what would happen? Well, let's kind of number this here first. Let's number this as carbons 1, 2, and 3 over here, and we'll call we'll call this um, 1, 2, and 3, but we'll make all those primes. So that'll be 1 prime, 2 prime, and 3 prime. And so here, what ends up happening is that the 3 prime OH ends up being the one that's connected to the phosphate group while the CMP group falls off. So we've got, this is going to be 3 prime carbon here, 2 prime, 1 prime, then the phosphate group, and then this is going to be carbon number 3, 2, and 1. Okay? And that gives us cardiolipin, which is a molecule that we saw in the previous video. And this process is catalyzed by cardiolipin synthase, specifically the eukaryotic version of that enzyme. So how is this, how is forming cardiolipin here different than how it occurs in bacteria? Well, one thing is that here we have a eukaryotic enzyme, so that's different, whereas over before we had the bacterial enzyme. Another thing is that here in eukaryotes, we started off with CDPDAG, and we added phosphatidylglycerol to get cardiolipin, whereas in the prokaryotes, that's not what happened. We had two phosphatidylglycerols that condensed together to give cardiolipin. So that's, I really wanted to mention that here as just a difference between the two. Now, another way to um, make another uh, glycerophospholipid is adding this alcohol, inositol. And if we add inositol to replace the CMP here, the CMP will fall off and the inositol will get added. The, this, um, this OH here, this number one OH on the inositol, will actually be connected to this phosphate group, the red one, as the CMP falls off. And we'll get phosphatidyl inositol shown here. And so that's that linkage that was made there. And now, so that was basically our step three, right? Our step three in that, that was the addition of, of the polar head group alcohol. And that was catalyzed by phosphatidyl inositol synthase. That makes sense. It's just making phosphatidyl inositol. And now that phosphatidyl inositol can be modified in our step four, in our step four, by... specific phosphatidyl inositol kinases, which will add phosphates to carbons, or to the OHs on carbon 4 and 5 of inositol. So these two carbon, these two OHs, this one here and this one here, will get phosphate groups attached to them, and that will, these are kinases that where these phosphates are coming from, so you imagine they're coming from ATP, and we'll add two so that each of those groups gets a phosphate group, and that gives us phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate, sometimes known as PIP2, and that is important because it's we've seen it before in the IP3 DAG signaling pathway. Okay. Now, we've got specific organisms uh, that we're going to use as examples here. Uh, so yeasts, yeast uh, is a eukaryote, and we're going to see a specific example of how how we might make a glycerophospholipid in, in yeast. So 
We can start with CDPDAG, just like before, and we can add our, our alcohol, serine, um, specifically the alcohol group, serine, um, and we'll kick off this CMP here. Just as a reminder, this whole portion is the CMP. And that will replace the CMP. We'll get that serine portion attached there to give us phosphatidylserine. And phosphatidylserine can give us phosphatidylethanolamine if we just have a decarboxylation step to get rid of that and end up with this. So we've actually seen that before in prokaryotes. This is happening just like it happened in prokaryotes. Right, so those first few steps are pretty much just like, I want to put similar to prokaryotes or bacteria, right? So we made phosphatidylethanolamine just like we did with um, prokaryotes. Now what can happen is we can have a further modification, right? So this decarboxylation step was a step four, right, a, a modification. Um, we could further mo modify this phosphatidylethanolamine and turn it into phosphatidylcholine by basically replacing these hydrogens here on this amino group, these three hydrogens, we replace them with three methyl groups. And what that's going to require is that's going to require three one carbon transfers. Three one carbon transfers. And we're going to add three methyl groups from a specific donor. That donor molecule is SAM. Okay, so we're going to have three molecules of SAM donate a methyl group each, and each one, each of those methyl groups will be uh, attached to that nitrogen from that amino group, and these SAMs will become uh, SAHs. So SAM is S adenosyl methionine, and SAH is uh, S adenosyl homocysteine. How do those molecules look? Um, they look like this. Let's see here. Let's sort of reveal what's going on here. Okay, so that's Sam right there. And just below it, we'll put, we'll show you uh, SAH. So that's S adenosyl L homocysteine. So why do these names make sense and which is the methyl group that's actually donated? Uh well it's called S adenosyl methionine. The adenosyl comes from the adenine portion that's that's up here, right? This is adenine up here. Right, that's the adenine. So that's where the adenosyl comes from, uh, especially because this is the ribose here. Adenine, ribose. And then over here we've got um the, the adenosyl portion is attached to this sulfur, right? Which is part of this whole thing over here, with it, which would be methionine, right? That portion there, methionine. And so this methyl group is actually the group that's donated from SAM to the phosphatidylethanolamine that we just saw a moment ago. And when it's gone, that become that the molecule changes its structure to look like this, right? This methyl group is now gone. There's no longer a plus charge there. And we have s adenosyl homocysteine. So this molecule over here uh, would be the amino acid homocysteine. So that process, um, you know, where SAM is acting as a one carbon donor, uh, is catalyzed by a methyl transferase enzyme to give us phosphatidylcholine. So this is yet another step four-ish kind of molecule, or excuse me, step four-ish kind of step uh, or reaction, right, in that we are modifying an existing glycerophospholipid to, to a different glycerophospholipid. Okay, so now that's how it works in yeast. Let's see how it works in mammals. Slide this on over. All right, we got mammals now. Okay, so Let's say that we're starting from a CDP DAG, again, an activated DAG. We want to add serine just like we did before in yeast to give us phosphatidyl serine. Okay, let's say we wanted to do that. Well, in mammals, that's going to be a no-no. That does not happen. Okay. This, this particular glycerophospholipid, phosphatidyl serine, 
in mammals, although mammals can have both method 1 and method 2 both occur, method, method 1 is not used to make phosphatidylserine. It's not made from CDP DAG, deactivated DAG, right? It's not made from method 1. Instead, it's made from deactivated alcohol, which is method 2. Okay. Now, I'm not actually going to draw that. I encourage you to try it on your own after I show you two different examples. So I'm going to show you how to make phosphatidylethanolamine and phosphatidylcholine, and hopefully you can apply what we learned here to try to do phosphatidylserine on your own. Okay. So we've got ethanolamine here, just the alcohol. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to activate it by... Uh, adding an ATP, and then when an ADP comes off, and this is done by ethanolamine kinase. So, question over here is listed, does it make sense to be investing energy here? Uh, the answer is yes, right? We're talking about biosynthesis, right? So, biosynthesis is anabolic, requires energy, right? um, or can require energy. So, um, anabolism occurs often when we have a high energy state anyway. Okay. Uh, anyway, a little bit sidetracked. We've got ethanolamine kinase, right? A kinase that adds a phosphate to ethanolamine to give us this new molecule, so, which is just ethanolamine with a phosphate group on the end. So that's going to be phosphoethanolamine. Name makes sense. Now, when we have phosphoethanolamine, we're going to turn that into CDP ethanolamine. So in order to do that, we have to invest a CTP, which has three phosphates. And we're really only attaching this purple portion, which only has one phosphate. So we're adding a CMP, essentially. The other two phosphates must be gone as a pyrophosphate. The enzyme that accomplishes this is CTP ethanolamine cytidyltransferase. Let's kind of break down that name a little bit, because that's kind of complicated. CTP ethanolamine, okay, CTP working with phosphoethanolamine, cytidyltransferase. We're transferring the cytidine portion um, over to this ethanolamine, okay, or phosphoethanolamine, to get CDP ethanolamine. Okay. So now we have CDP ethanolamine. What we're going to do is this is basically the activated alcohol, right? So once we have, let me actually make a note of that here. This is the activated alcohol, right? Ready to go. So now we just need the diacylglycerol to come in. Diacylglycerol comes in, and it's going to basically kick off the CDP, uh, or excuse me, the CMP portion, the purple portion here. That's going to fall off, and the diacylglycerol is basically going to take its place. Specifically, the OH, or the oxygen in, in um, on the third carbon in DAG, is going to connect to the phosphate group to give us that head group. And that will give us phosphatidylethanolamine. That process is catalyzed by CDP ethanolamine diacylglycerol phosphoethanolamine transferase. Again, a mouthful. But that should make a little bit of sense. We're talking about an interaction between CDP ethanolamine and DAG, so that's where that part comes from, phosphoethanolamine transferase. We're just transferring this phosphoethanolamine portion over. We're basically just taking this part of the molecule and we're putting it here. We're just putting it right there. right? And then the CMP portion leaves. And so that gives us phosphatidylethanolamine. Okay? Now, the same process can happen to give you phosphatidylcholine. So I'll run through that kind of quickly, um, just to make sure that this video isn't too long. But I still would encourage you to try to slow it down and maybe even think about what these enzyme names might be yourself. Um, but uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to invest in ATP to give phosphocholine, right, we're starting with choline, and the enzyme is going to be a kinase as well, choline kinase, because it's acting on choline. Once we have that phosphocholine, we're going to add a CTP, and a pyrophosphate will come off, and we'll have the enzyme be CTP choline cytidyltransferase, again, just transferring that cytidine portion over. Now we have a CDP choline, and that CMP portion is going to fall off and be replaced by the DAG, right, so that we can get that phosphocholine portion basically attached to the 
um, third carbon's oxygen onto diacylglycerol. That'll be catalyzed by CDP choline diacylglycerol phosphocholine transferase. Again, transferring this portion right here to give us phosphatidylcholine. Okay, that's the process there. Now, what we could have also done is instead of that whole right side happening, once we got phosphatidylethanolamine, we could have just turned that into phosphatidylcholine with three one carbon transfers of SAM to give these three methyl groups to phosphatidylethanolamine to make phosphatidylcholine. So that could have happened there. And again, that's another modification uh, to give a glycerophospholipid. So I hope that video and that video series was helpful. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.